Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this in-depth painting tutorial for orcs and uh, I've got one of my orc trucks here. Uh, we're going to take on a, a bigger project, you know, painting vehicles can be an intimidating thing. Uh, so in this video I'm going to take you from start to finish uh, how to paint an orc truck. I've got one that I've already painted, uh, so you can see the kind of outcome uh, that we're going to be trying to achieve here. It, it looks, and I have to admit when I I uh, looked at the model after it was under coat, so I thought it was going to take me absolutely ages to paint this. Uh, but in fact, uh, the technique that I'm going to show you is very quick, uh, but as you can see, I'm very happy with the outcome. I think it's quite effective, uh, nice ramshackle kind of look uh, to the orcs. Now we're going to cover, there's two orc boys here, so uh, driver and gunner, so we'll be able to show you some skin. Uh, and then also, a lot of people have been asking, how do you paint the checkered patterns? Uh, well, that's what I'm going to be showing you. Uh, in this painting tutorial as well. So uh, some transfers to put on, uh, I'll go through that as well in the video. But that's the outcome that we're looking for. I'm going to take you through uh, the stages to achieve that um, so that you can get the same kind of results with your orcs. I mean you don't have to use this technique for orcs, you can apply it to some other faction uh, if you want to, if you want to copy the style and the, the techniques that you're shown uh, then by all means apply it to some other army that you're collecting. This is for orcs here, we're going to look at an orc truck in this in-depth painting tutorial. Right, so the first thing is paints you'll need. Uh, it's not too many. Uh, so, uh, a bad and black is the first one, and then uh, ceramite white, those two. Then uh, ushabti bone, and then uh, Evil Sun's Scarlet, just that nice strong red colour. Uh, then uh, Flash Gits Yellow. Then I've got the old Goblin Green here, which has now been replaced by War Boss uh, Green. That's obviously going to use that for the flesh. Uh, then uh, Steel Legion Drab. And then Iron Breaker uh, for the metallics. And then also Hashuck Copper. And then for washes, use three washes. Seraphim Sepia, uh, a Phonian Camo Shade, it's an, quite an important one, uh, and then also Agrax Earth Shade as well. So that's the colours, not too many, uh, that's quite a sensible amount considering the size of the project. Right, so here we have the Orc truck. I've constructed the whole thing, I paint the whole lot together, there's nothing here that's yet to be stuck on. Uh, so I think the philosophy is if you can't see it, uh, there's no point in painting it, so... Uh, and you can just complicate things uh, by taking stuff out, painting it separate, sticking it on. Um, so I, for, for ease of, of just getting on with it and for saving time I just stick the whole lot together um, and then just paint and try and work the brush in as best as I can. If you can't reach it then you probably can't see it anyway. Uh, the key here to saving time uh, is straight onto the plastic I've given it a coat uh, of plate mount spray plate mouse spray by Army Painter, uh, just a nice even coat all the way across, um, underneath, on top, all the way around, uh, so you just, as you start turning the vehicle upside down, spray here, turn it, spray across, and then turn it, go all the way around, and then when it dries a bit, flip it over, and then do the same again, that gives you a nice coat all the way across the vehicle, um, and it will get into all of the nooks and crannies as well. The key here is we're going to the intimidating thing about this um, project is all of this metallic work. 
And the technique I'm going to show you is just a, a quick way of getting around that so you don't have to spend loads and loads of time picking it all out. Part of the key to that is to have this base colour uh, of uh, the silver and then to be able to apply your washes directly on top of that, just go straight into washes. Uh, and that's going to save loads and loads of time. Uh, so the important thing here uh, with that plate mouse spray is you'll often find if you put washes on top it all starts to puddle and doesn't go across nicely. So I found an easy uh, tip to get past that is then just to give it a coat of varnish, purity seal. Again, same thing all the way around uh, as I mentioned earlier. Just purity seal all the way across. Just quite a light coat, just make sure it's covered uh, completely. Um, and then you'll find that when you put the washes on, uh, you won't get that puddling effect. The washes will go on nicely and evenly, um, and it will look uh, ten times better. You're really going to have trouble if you don't put uh, the varnish on first. So that's been sprayed the plate mail silver, and then varnish. That's completely dry now and ready to go on to the first stage, which is the base colours. Right, so the first colour we're going to do uh, is the other metallic. It's nice to have a second metallic. Uh, when you're painting lots of metal to paint, you try and introduce a second metallic into it to break it up. Otherwise, it's all silver and doesn't look very good. Uh, so I'm going to pick out uh, some of the components here with a different metallic. I'm using uh, a wash brush, but it's an old wash brush. Uh, it's one that I've scrubbed and done highlighting on bases with, and it's made it a nice pointed kind of brush. So I've got a nice lot of control, but it's still big enough to carry a fair amount of paint. You want to be quite neat here. Um, now you, it's orcs, so you can just use this colour wherever you want. The areas that I go for uh, is I try and think of what metal parts would be a different colour. This grille here, uh, the front of the engine, I think would be different. So I just apply a coat of that. It goes straight onto the silver. And uh, because the base colour is the silver, then it goes on no problem. One coat will do. And again, you're saving yourself loads and loads of time. You can do a second if you want it to be more solid, but I've found that one coat is just quite enough. There'll be washes and things going on top. So that goes there, and then I just run it up to that edge. Looks fine. I'm just actually going to run it like that. And then, uh, not the banding that goes around these cylinders, but the actual, uh, the main part of the cylinders themselves, I'll do in this colour. Again, just to make, two, to have two different types of metal going on there. You can imagine these being that colour. So I just do these around, working the brush around. Working quite fast, uh, trying to be as neat as possible, and yet still working quick, not being ultra fussy. But um, no, I would say you want to be neat, and there's no reason why not. It's quite straightforward at the moment. So just filling in that. Uh, you may you may hardly notice it on camera. It's not you know too strong a colour. Uh, just looking round here, I'm gonna do the grill on the other side. Just quickly fill that in. Along down. And then these here I'm going to do uh, in that colour. I'm just using the other truck here as a reference. See the band going around there? I'm going to leave that the regular metal colour. Just do these vents or exhausts. I'm going to do those uh, with this copper. All three of them. And then all the way up to the end. Try and fill in the holes as best as I can. And then here up to that band. Along. I'm about three quarters of the way through the orcs at the moment. Um, I'm just getting the 
units of boys mechanized in trucks here so but I'm enjoying painting them I've just gone over the band there so I'm just gonna rub it off with my finger and the other side down let the brush down Fuss, that's it, that's nice. Uh, then, because I still have got quite a nice tip on this, I can go straight onto the bullets and the bullet uh, casing. Not the tips, they'll be silver, uh, but the actual cartridge casing uh, will be in silver. And just a little bit along the front. I'll neaten with the silver later on. A little bit along the front there as well. Then you've got uh, a, a barrel just here. I paint the whole thing that colour. Again, it's just create an area of interest to create a separate metal. Be surprised, just this little bit of effort, and uh, it makes it look a lot more uh, professional. Makes it look like you've spent more time on it without too much effort at all. Just go around the barrel here. Now again, time saving. There's loads of details, materials under here. You're not going to see it, uh, so I'm not going to bother painting any of this stuff underneath. It's all silver already. Put some washes over the top, and that's perfectly fine. So that's that colour done. Uh, that's the uh, metallic. We'll go on to some other colours now. Right, next colour is Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, now, for orcs, you want each, you want as much variety as you can. Uh, so, you know, they're generally going to be the same these panels, but I want to mix the colours up uh, and not, you know, have an identical copy of a vehicle. So I'm just using this as my reference. I'm going to sort of make sure that I don't copy uh, as much from here onto there. Try and make it uh, odds and evens. So uh, I'll just go around. Just you just do some panels in red. It's your choice, really, how you want to do it. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I can start off with this boy's shoulder pad here. I'm actually going to do it in red. A little bit of red gone onto the helmet there, doesn't matter. Now the trick here, uh, if you think about it, uh, the old boy's got this, it's a slab of, of metal armour plate. The edges are going to stay silver. And it's already been sprayed for you, so it's saved time. And you're just painting the actual panel itself, the colour, and just leaving the edges. Um, so that, that's going to be the easy thing about this. You're just putting paint onto the panels, and you're not having to go around all the edges really neatly, because it's already silver uh, and done for you. So that's the other great time-saving uh, aspect to this method. So I'm just going around the surface of the old oh boy's shoulder pad there. That's it, it looks nice and red. Um, okay, then, just looking how I can do this uh, differently, I like the idea of this central panel being red. I don't want to go around the edges, just the surface of this. I'm going to work the paint into the gaps here. If you miss a few bits, it doesn't matter because it's going to look like it's chipped anyway. So you've got some license to be quite loose uh, with orcs here and you'd be able to cover it up and, and, and people won't be fussed. You're not looking for complete neat, neatness with orcs. They are um, sort of untidy looking anyway. I'm just working the paint here. Here. Looks good. I'm just going to take the paint off the metal there. So that's that front. Uh, design, I'll do that in red. I'm just going to go the rest of the miniature, try and I just sort of try and balance it out and choose what kind of panels I'm going to do uh, in red here. Remember, you've got black panels to do as well and some white to include. Right, so that's the uh, red done. The thing is, the more panels you paint, the more work you're going to have to do. Um, so the trick is to not do too many. I've done a few here, that's probably more than, more than I need to. Uh, here, here, and here. Remember, there's black to go on. I did paint this panel here. Um, I've decided I'm going to I'm going to cover that with black, and instead I've gone uh, for putting red here on these uh, this ram uh, reinforced ram here, make it look a bit more aggressive. 
um, and then just keep that area black. Uh, so some other areas I'm going to do in black here as well, uh, and then coming around. Uh, I don't want too much red in this colour scheme, it's just an extra little colour. One uh, here is in red, just a bit there and a bit there, and uh, that's pretty much it. If you start painting loads of panels in red, um, you're going to make lots of work for yourself. So the key is just to pick out some panels, um, and then uh, that'll be fine. So we're just going to go on to uh, black now. Just regular bad on black. And now you do the same thing again, so you just choose what uh, areas that you want to fill in with black. It's going to be more this time, black's more the predominant uh, colour uh, for this game. But So there's some black areas here, there'll be more uh, to cover with this one, so it's going to take you a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, the front panels here, I'm going to do some of them. And again you're free to choose whatever ones you want to do, uh, but I think I'm going to do them. This one in black, I'm just going to fill in that red. Once you've done all your panels, you know, you stand back and look at it once all the base colours are done, you think to yourself, you know, you're happy with how that's balanced, if not, then just change uh, some panels around. I'm going to do this one in black here as well. I'm going to do uh, this one in black. And then this trim around here. As you can see, being pretty neat. But I'm going to be picking out all these edges with the silver in the final highlight stage anyway. Um, right then, for this one, uh, yeah, I'm going to go for black here. as well. Some of these panels we're going to put checkered patterns onto as well, so remember that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these teeth along here in white and there'll be some other areas of white as well and that'll be, that'll do. Uh, the engine grill here at the top, I'm going to do in black this time, it's red on the other truck, so just to mix it up I'm just going to do it in black. And just working my way around these uh, these sort of diamond shaped bits here. Not being too fussy because if I go a little bit, you know, make a mistake, flick onto them, doesn't matter because I'm going to be uh, picking out the silver again later on, anyways. So that will neaten any edges that you've run over by accident. It's quite forgiving uh, for any mistakes uh, with this technique here. Just going around the other side, making sure I've got the side of this intake, engine intake panel, looks good. I used to paint the front of this grill here as well, I did it in red on the last one so I'm going to do it in black for this one. So we're just filling it in, but only the front, I'm not going over the top here, this is chunky metal so I'm going to leave that raw metal. This is if the orcs themselves have just painted slap paint onto the panels, um, they wouldn't bother about being going neatly around the edges, uh, they will just leave that raw um, metal, so you can do the same. You know, they paint their vehicles quick, no doubt, and uh, there's no reason why you can't as well. Uh, big panel here with some checkered patterns, so I'm going to uh, just fill that all in with the black. So, so these little bits of studded metal sticking out, just leave them. That's little extra bits they've riveted on, then just leave them. Just going around that, around that panel. Around this one. Yeah. See, I flicked onto that one, doesn't matter. Easily cover that up later on. It's all filling in nicely. 
See a large brush, nice tip to it, I can work around quite quick. I will just do the edge of this one. Uh, the, the the front of that arrow there as well. And this lower panel. I'm going to fill that in with black as well. Just working around. Yeah, quite happy that's coming up. Uh, leave those two bits. And then just going around, uh, I'm just going to carry on with this and then we'll come back and I'll show you what areas uh, are done and finished in the black. Right, so just painting up on the black here, uh, just going across, just going to show you how I paint a wheel. Um, so, a fair amount of paint on the brush, and then I'll just go across in this direction here, covering as much as I can, and any areas uh, that the brush hasn't got into, I just work the brush in, and then again, just do it all in this direction, as far around as I can go, stabbing it in to any areas that I missed, and then stabbing it in around the edge here and the key is uh, to go up to this rim line here which I'm going to repaint with the silver uh, to neaten it up uh, later on so don't be fussed you know don't be wor worrying if you go over that uh, but that's the aim that's the line that you're aiming to go up to uh, and not to cross that so you want to you don't want to fill in uh, the hub there just go up to this edge and then don't worry if you go over that edge we're going to uh, put a ring of uh, the silver around it later on uh, to neaten it up. You could paint individual panels on the wheels and just really go to town on them. Um, I don't think there's any need to. If you go over the top, remember the more detail on that you pick out, the more work you're going to have to do later on. And just running uh, the brush over the top. Just just showing the wheel there because it's, you know, potentially it could be time consuming. I'm just showing you it's worth just doing it quick. Nice sized brush, I've missed a bit there, working it all in. We'll bring up the detail on the wheels a bit later and I'll show you how we do that effect. Uh, that's pretty much all the black done, quite happy with that. Uh, just a note on the uh, hash light copper, I did do this um, exhaust vent here in that colour as well. Um, I just black out the search light here. It's just easier, I don't think there's any need to draw attention to it. So I just fill that in with black. And then I've done uh, the helmets here on both of these old boys. I've done uh, the casing on the uh, ammunition box. Uh, the belt that runs, that holds the bullets together on the ammunition belt. Uh, I've then done this uh, spiky bits here, along the top there and there. Uh, panels on both sides. Uh, I've done the wheels. Uh, as you've seen, and then you've got the vent, uh, or the intake here, uh, this grill, the front panel part I've done in black, these panels here, um, and that is pretty much it. And you see it's quite well covered now, um, just some work and you're able to start pulling out uh, the colours from the vehicle. Then uh, I've, what I've done with the axe here, I've decided to fill this panel in here on the axe in red, both sides there and there. Uh, and then some of the hash light copper I've done for this little box here at the back, uh, both sides as well. And you'll find that with Orcs, you've got a license to put stuff wherever you want, so you're going to find that you're going to uh, you know, open a pot quickly and just fill in different areas as you please. Um, you know, you've got some, you're not following a strict pattern of how to paint them, uh, you've got your own, you, know, you balance it how you want to. Right, there's another bit to do, I'll just take a bit of this, uh, the iron breaker, add some black to it. About 50 50s, you've got a, a very dark metallic colour. Um, and it's just for uh, this bit of the axe, this sort of piping at the back here, that ribbed piping. I always do that in a dark metallic. There. And then I'll just get it around the other side. That's just sort of a general rule that I have when I'm painting orcs. Um, if I see that ribbed kind of pattern on any weapon, then I, that ribbed kind of tubing, then I just give it that dark metallic. Uh, kind of colour, that's good. I'm going to fill in some other colours here. Um, so I'm going to take the old Goblin Green, which uh, is now Warboss Green. I'm going to use that for all of the skin. Um, so anywhere where there's skin, 
uh, you just fill that in. It's a nice strong colour this one, uh, so one coat will do it. And I've dropped my brush size down uh, to base coat brush, but this is again one that's been quite worn out and the tip's quite pointed on it, so I'm able to keep quite a lot of control uh, on the paint. You might want to use a brush that's perhaps slightly smaller. And you want to be neat on this one. You don't want to go over onto any of the metal work, uh, it'll just create more work for yourself. Uh, it's just neatly filling the skin. Just doing this arm here, and then uh, it's actually uh, he's actually bare chested, so I'm gonna fill in around the rib cage here. Now the areas um, where there's belts and so on, that's obviously going to be painted brown, so you can overlap that at this stage to make sure you get rid of all the silver, and then you can be neater uh, with the brown in those areas later on. Just going up around the hands here, and then round, being neat around the metal work. I don't want to get green onto that. Looks good. Down there, down there, and then underneath. Like that. That's looking nice. That's it. I'll just fill out the rest of those two boys, uh, get all of the skin done uh, in that goblin green or warboss green. So that's the green done then. Um, you can see once you stop the green, putting the green on there, uh, that really starts to uh, fill out the model um, with that orc flesh on there. So uh, the next colour we're going to do, because uh, this has been sprayed silver, you know, the brown areas have been covered, uh, the belts and uh, cloths, clothes that they're wearing, some of the grips and things. We need to fill those in now uh, with uh, a nice brown colour. The best colour that I use uh, is still Legion Drab. Um, you know, it's not solid brown, uh, but then when you put the washes over the top, it makes it look quite nice and, and rich and good. I've got the big brush again here, the wash brush. I'm just going to do the bigger areas. See the, uh, the bars that run along the back here? There's like these grips uh, made of uh, like sort of straps wrapped around. So I'm just going to run the brush along there and fill those in. Very straightforward. Just making sure the brush goes all the way around. Turn upside down. Just get in underneath. So you can see that area there. Uh, there's another one just here. Let's run the brush all the way along. Like so. On there, and then don't want to miss any bits for this one, so I'm just making sure I've got every angle covered. Just running the brush underneath. Looks good. It's them two. Uh, there's one just here, uh, so we'll fill that one in as well. Don't want to go over onto the metal work. Just leave that separate because the wash is going to go right up to it. And then just spin the vehicle around and then get it in at the back. Around the sides. That's good. There isn't one on the other side. There's one here along the top of his, uh, the bar that goes on top of uh, the driver's seat. So I'll just carefully unbrush underneath and on top, around the back, and then I can s see through from the other side. It. Just looking around, just on that theme of looking for these grips, I'm just looking to see if there's any more. And uh, it doesn't look like it. That's fine, there's nothing really going to be on the main bodywork uh, of the vehicle. Now make sure you get all that covered because once that colour's on and you put the washes, that's pretty much it. You won't need to touch it again. You won't even need to put a highlight on it uh, if you don't want to. Then we've got straps and things around his arm. We've got sort of a bandage around his arm here. Uh, so I'm just going to fill that in. This is where you're neat now. I'm actually going to swap my brush out. I'm going to drop the scale down. I'm going to go on to a, a base coat brush, but this is one that's been worn out, so it's quite uh, tight and narrow looking. Um, so just select a nice brush. Brush that's going to cover the ground for you uh, that you need to, and yet have quite a nice tip to it for neatness. 
because uh, as I said, once this is on, you're not going to need to do any other work to it other than those washes. So got the front done there, I'm just going to tuck the brush underneath and we'll go around behind and just fill in that bandage there, around and underneath. The handle of the axe I will do in this brown as well. Like so. Make sure again I go all the way around. Looks good. Right, it's just zooming in here so you can see where I've been uh, with the paintings. Just paint the um, just anywhere where it's cloth or strap or belt is all painted in this steel drab. Uh, the axe handles, well, uh, wood, I've decided it's going to be, so it's along there, it's all done. Um, and then just taking the brush, working it down inside, just reaching what you can see as best as you can. There's going to be washes and things put down inside there, so you're not really, it's not significant. Uh, then neatly all the way around up to where the skin is, just around here, around the back. And then just as I showed you earlier, uh, these areas that have been bound with cloth as well. If you want to do a second coat, you can. One coat seems to be enough here. The silver's quite a nice foundation colour. Right, so this vehicle is pretty much there as far as base colours are concerned. Uh, it's just a little bit of Ushabti bone to do now. Uh, so I'm going to fill in the area where there are teeth on these Orc boys. Because you want to shade it in green. Um, use the actual bone colour and then let the washes do their work. Neat here. And again one coat will do. That's those teeth done. And then down here uh, for the other all point. I'm not just painting the surface of the teeth, I'm, I'm working the brush around to the sides of the, 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 the tooth there. It's sort of sculpted on, so you want to get both sides. Left side here, coming around, and then or right side, and then this left hand side. Just make sure it's all done. Looking good. Uh, the horns here on his helmet I'm going to do in this bone colour as well. And the more silver you cover, the more that original silver just gets pushed away and it actually becomes a background colour, which is the key to this. It's not too much effort to get this entire vehicle base coated. And uh, once you've done that, you're actually, uh, you're actually well on your way to getting this done. Can't really see anywhere else. I'm just looking here. There's no more teeth, there's no more horns anywhere. Uh, that's pretty much it uh, for the bone. So that's that done. Uh, we'll make sure that dries completely, especially the, the black and so on in the corners um, before we put any washes on there. But that's just a note on the white. Um, there are some white panels in here. I found that again to save time, don't bother with the white at all at this stage. A little shading be done first, uh, and then we'll, we'll panel on some white later on. And then do and then shade it a little bit after. I've just found it's just quicker. I used to panel all the white in and then I put the washes over the top, and then I find I just have to repaint the white over the top of it, and it's sort of a waste of time. So uh, that's done. That is base colours done. Uh, the two boys look good, all their details filled in. Uh, there's no silver on them hardly at all now. Uh, and then you've got all this panelling going on. Let's push that silver more into the background, and these panels become more and more uh, predominant on the vehicle. Happy with that. We're going to washes next as the second stage. Right, so on the wash stage here, uh, the first wash that I do uh, is a phony and camo shade, and it's like a brownie green colour. I found that when I was shading orc flesh with brown, you know, it dried brown, it didn't look quite right. Uh, but the strong green kind of colour made it too green. So there's this nice colour here, a phony and camo shade is that mix between brown and green, and it will be for the orc flesh here. So I've got a base coat brush, it's more of a newer brush, so it's, it's a full brush. Um, it means you can take a nice lot of the wash and still have some control. The priority is to work this into the skin. And it's a fair coat, it's um, making sure it's all shaded nicely. I'm only going to put one shade on the skin, um, so just make sure it's all filled in well. The face and the teeth can be filled in with that. It's just brown enough not to turn the teeth green. It's just perfect really that shade. Do the hand here on the gun. 
work it around to the other side. And then uh, this is the arm. Like that. And the uh, flesh around the neck. Under the neck. Working that in under the chin. That's how we're done. And this other oh boy driver. Work it into the arm, around the hand, between the fingers. If you miss a little bit, uh, when you come to the brown later, you'll cover it anyway. Uh, well, you can cover it. You're not going to put brown at the top. It's just one wash. But if you see a mistake, you can put a bit of brown there. It won't, you know, on a small mistake, it won't really be noticeable. Around the neck area and back. Just catch the other side. And then this arm and then rib cage. Back of the arm. Run brush along. Around. And then... Just under the arm and around there. That's it. And you're shading your skin just nice. Just flooding a little bit in on the face, just making sure those details are covered. That's good. And that's picked out uh, those tall boys and their flesh just nice. A brownie green colour, perfect shade there uh, for the orc flesh. We'll let that dry completely, and then we'll we'll go on to the next wash. Right, so the uh, next stage here, you've done your base colours. Uh, we've done this first wash here, the, uh, the Aphonian Camo shade. Uh, the next thing uh, is Seraphim Sepia, and this wash will link the entire model together. You're going to cover everything uh, with this wash, uh, except the orc skin. It's just going to tie the whole thing in, and it's going to create this rusty uh, ramshackle effect on uh, the metal work. Because you've got that base of silver already on there that you've sprayed and varnished, this wash can go straight on and it can do the uh, the shading work for you. So just start wherever you want. Uh, I've got a, a new brush here, it's a wash brush. And you just take the wash and work it into the vehicle. Now you don't want to miss bits really, so take your time and make sure you work it into the model. And as I said, just making sure I get every nook and cranny with it. If you see a bit you've missed later, uh, then just dab some wash in. There'll be a second wash to put over this as well. Anyway, and that will help cover any areas that you've missed by accident. Now, that's the normal metal. And then when you see when it goes onto the bronze, it deepens and strengthens that colour as well. This is the quick aspect to this technique is that you're just universally covering it with the same washes uh, the surface here so it's going quite well, pretty quick inside there along behind here and that's it, I'm just going to continue doing that across the entire model uh, and then once that's done we'll just make sure that dries before we're going on to the next wash so that's the uh, seraphim sepia wash done that's just drying uh, and I've coated that across the entire model see how it's unified uh, the uh, vehicle there all the colors together and then you'll also see how it's starting to move it towards uh, how the finished uh, vehicle is going to look uh, so these washes are very very important uh, they do a very important uh, thing of bringing together uh, all the colors on the vehicle but you just let, let that dry it's got to dry completely uh, before you can go on uh, to the final wash there, but that's really brought that on to the next level now And that's looking pretty good. So we'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the last wash Right, so we've let that shade dry uh, And you see how it's nicely unified that together the final shade that we're going to do is Agrax Earth shade And it's exactly the same again. You're just going to coat the entire thing except the skin that's already been done uh, And then just coat the entire vehicle. That's really going to uh, strengthen uh, all the details there. It's going to fill in everything I'm going to darken everything down just to the next stage. So it's the same process again. Uh, it is important that you've let the previous wash dry, otherwise just, the two are just going to bleed into each other and you won't get the same strength. Uh, so I'm just uh, working the brush in. And you see that this shade, the previous shade makes it kind of rust kind of look. And then this second shade 
uh, just strengthens the details and the uh, lines there. So that's all I'm going to do with this one. It's just working. I'd highly recommend you just, just do a fire job, take your time. Uh, you don't want to miss patches because uh, it is noticeable and doesn't look very good. Uh, so the key is just to just methodically uh, work your way along, getting it all done, and then uh, that's then a good job. So I'll just continue on here, just going to coat the entire model, let it dry, and then that's that stage done as well. Alright, so the washes are done now. Uh, the Agrax Earth shade is uh, completely dry, uh, and that's just done all the shading across the miniature. And it's unified the whole thing, so it's uh, looking really good. I mean, you can almost use it in the game now as it is. Um, but the next stage is now is just the final highlights, the final um, details uh, to bring this up and make it look really good. Um, so, first colour I've got here is the Wesdecker Red. Uh, sorry, Evil Sun Scarlet actually is the colour. Sort of a brighter, stronger red. Uh, it's the same colour that we originally used. So you've got the original colour here, it's been shaded, and then we're just going to bring up uh, the colour here and strengthen it. So, letting, leaving areas in the shade, and then you just got quite a big brush here, it's an older standard brush, and I'm just, I sort of just work the brush in, uh, sort of dabbing it on, so you're not making really strong straight lines, but more just kind of a dabbing kind of effect, because you're not looking to go too deep into the detail, but just strengthen the main part of the panels. So you see the difference there between this one and this one? I don't know if it'd be too fussy, uh, but just strengthen the main bit, because you're going to put chipping on top of this as well. It's just to neaten up tidy the red, like so. This is nice and quick. Just do this end bit, done. And then I'm just going to go behind his axe here, which have gone for red. Like so. And then... Yeah. Just filling that in. I'm just enhancing uh, the red. Tiny bit on top of the helmet. Not too fussed about that. That's it. And then the shoulder pad. Just working the brush in. So we're just working that in. There. And I'll just enhance the rest of this. Um, just strengthening the red basically, uh, not being too fussy, just covering the main areas and then leaving the shaded areas done, but that's, uh, that's how you do that colour. Alright, so that's the red done. Uh, we're going to do the bronze next. Uh, so the bronze areas like uh, here in this exhaust, uh, some parts around the engine and the grills. So you want to make a highlight colour for that. Uh, so you take your original Hashak Copper. I'm just going to put it on the mixing palette here. And actually lighten it uh, with the old mithril silver, the very light silver uh, that you can get. And uh, I should have mentioned that at the beginning, that's just the, another colour that you use to mix in with the Hashak Copper. Uh, I would say maybe a, it's not half and half because the silver is very strong. I would say maybe a quarter of it in the silver and the rest will be the copper. Uh, that's the kind of colour I've mixed up there, it's just like a highlight uh, colour for this copper here. And then just painting it on over the details here, and again, not too fussy, I wouldn't be too fussed with it. Uh, just a nice neat job, but leaving the shaded areas, and it just, it just highlights that nicely. Go all the way around here. All the way around. Make sure all this chimney is covered. That's it. Then there's uh, the bullet cartridges. Just run the brush along the top of them, along the back, and then just a bit along the edge here. It just enhances that. Uh, you've got these uh, cylinders here by the engine just highlight that and 
Like so. Front, back, middle. Like that. Going all the way around. Just checking just up to where the eye can see. You've got like the grill here. Um, so I just make sure there's not too much paint on the brush because you want it going to go in the cracks and then just run it across the surface, just catching that in the highlight. You can't really see it too much. Uh, we'll just run that along there. Run it along the side down. That just picks that out. Other side. Just scrub the brush along. The edge like that. Looking good. And here you've got these exhausts here. Uh, again, just run the brush over the surface and try not to fill in the details with it. So that's outside. Add a little bit of water to my mixer because it's starting to dry. Just to keep the paint flowing. I'm just catching the other side with this bronze highlight. Oh dear, looks good. Now I've got cylinder dump, uh, the grills, and then we've got the uh, exhausts there. Just looking around, I think that's pretty much it uh, for this colour. Yeah. And that's it looking good. So that's that done. It's not, as I said before, it's nice to have two colours on this uh, project, two uh, metallics to have, especially if you're painting a lot of silver. Um, you know, it's nice to be, be able to introduce another colour. Uh, I'm just running this along the tops of the exhaust, which I've drilled out by the way. I've used a drill and drilled those down. I also like to drill out the ends of the barrels on the guns as well. And then when you do your shading, just remember to feed some shade into the tips, into the ends there. I love gun barrels being drilled out to find it very annoying when they're solid. So it's something else to remember when you're at the constructing stage. Uh, but that's that colour dump. Right, so we're going to make a start on the uh, skin here for the orcs. Uh, so it's that wall boss green was the base colour. We shaded it uh, with the Afonian camo shade and that's just done all the details for us. Now I'm going to pick out the skin. Uh, and I tried to develop a technique that was effective and quite fast and yet still giving you details. So we're going to highlight the skin just with one colour um, and it's just a couple of the extreme details on the face and on the knuckles that we'll pick out with a highlight and that's it and it still looks um, pretty effective uh, for orcs. You want to build up loads and loads of layers and spend lots of time. Uh, so I'm going to take my uh, there's an old standard brush here it's been worn away. It's quite small um, with a nice tip. So I'll take the uh, War Boss Green or the Old Goblin Green. Um, just keeping the paint with a nice flow to it. And then instead of going uh, painting just the War Boss Green straight back on again, uh, I add a little bit of Flash Gets Yellow and then a little bit, and I mean a little bit, of the Ceramite White. Just going to add a tiny bit more. mix that in. It's just a slight upgrade on the shade. Now I mean a very small amount. Just lifting it away from the original wall boss green. And then with a good tip on the brush uh, you just pick out the details. Orcs nicely sculpted. Uh, they have a lot of the details already picked out for you. So it's just a case of running the brush over the details and avoiding the cracks. If you're quite new to painting, I recommend you maybe do this in a smaller brush. So I'm just going to add a bit more water to keep the paint nice and flowing. It's a good general tip is to have nice flowing paint. Uh, it's easier to paint details when the paint's got a good flow to it. 
So just painting the chin, got the lip, and then now up here, just tucking the brush in, just picking out the details, jawbone, just a bit of the eye socket, nose. Right, then just uh, back onto the skin, you're just looking to go around, pick out all the flesh, and then leave the extreme creases and shadows in shade. Just working the brush in. Be so careful that you don't make this too bright uh, when you mix this up. And even that's quite bright. So if you do make it too bright, just add more of the original wall boss green into the mix. Just to tone it down a level. It's just running the brush around the fingers. I've gone back up to the bigger brush here, but it has a nice tip to it. That's the key. And I like it bigger because it's keeping a nice uh, paint flowing. Nice um, green paint flowing there, just running it all the way around the hand. Moving the miniature around and uh, just running the brush along the fingers here. You can try and shade that way, but the danger is if filling it in doesn't look as good, so I just individually paint the fingers, it's no problem. Just run the brush around the back here. Just work your way all the way around to the back. There. And then crossing over. Carefully going around the base of this uh, axe, just being careful not to get paint onto that. And then just down underneath, making sure all the hand is done and picked out. You can see now that that hand is nicely uh, picked out and detailed there, looks good. I'm just going to carry on paint the rest of the flesh now uh, for these two old boys here in the trunk. Right, so that's the, that's the highlight done of all the flesh uh, across both of those. The final highlight uh, is just to enhance just some areas, just to lift out certain parts of the skin. Uh, so take the goblin green or war boss green again, uh, some flesh gets yellow and you're just uh, looking to increase the strength of the white mostly. Uh, so just mixing it up into that kind of colour. It's quite strong, but it's just for a highlight. And you'll see now, I'm going to pick out the extreme highlights on the face. Uh, so the lip here, chin, well, add a little bit more white to this, just make it a nice strong highlight. And just the edge of the uh, upper lip here. We'll catch the nose just a little bit and then just strengthen the lower lip there. You see how that's lifted uh, the face out on him. Then for the hands, uh, it's just the knuckles that you want to pick out, and uh, that's all you need to do. So, knuckles here one, two, three. And four. And that just picks it out nicely there. So knuckles there, and then also at the higher knuckle where it uh, reaches the. So the one that connects to the hand, and the one the other. Every time the finger bends around, basically. So there's one set there, one set there, and then one set just here before the finger. Now it's one, two. Can't see the other two, and then just on the thumb, one there. On there. Sometimes you can do the tips of the elbows as well. There's another that I would do. Can't see it here. Uh, then just the tip of the fingers here and here. And then one, two. Then going all the way around. Just going to catch the knuckles. One, two, three, four. And then just right inside there. One, two. You can see. That's it. And it's not too much area that you're covering but it's just enhancing it enough just to uh, lift that away from the rest of the highlights on the skin. Just working my way down the hand there and then just on the thumb knuckles there and then on the other side there, there and there 
that big lower uh, lip there. I'm going to pick that out nice and strong. Bit on the chin, and then a little bit on the upper lip. Right, so uh, next colour after the skin is the uh, bone. So we've got teeth here and some horns still on the helmet. So first colour I do uh, is just the shabati bone, just straight as it is. And uh, you just pick out the teeth. There, so just repaint them. There's quite a few on this guy's mouth. One, two, three, four. Another one. Another one. I'm just going to fill in the teeth here. Details nicely picked out for you, all the shading's done. Just pick out those teeth. There. Now for the bone on the helmet here, you just, um, these horns, I just do brush strokes running, lines running down, you're trying to create that grain uh, effect. Although these horns are very small, so you're not really going to notice it too much. I'm just going around. Just catching the horns from behind here. And there's a couple of teeth on this guy. So one there. It's the whole length of the tooth. One there. And then a big one. Just on the left. So that's that picked out. And then I then mix about 50 50 uh, the bone, Rishabti bone, and white. Maybe a little bit more white than 50 50 actually. Just it's a nice strong highlight. Mix that up and then I just catch the tips of the teeth. Not all of them, just catch the tips of the teeth. There, I'll catch the end of this horn either side. One, two, just catching a bit of a highlight on there. And then the tops of the teeth here. One. Two and then three, and that really enhances those teeth. Makes it look really good. So you can see now the skin and bone all done on these two old boys looking good. See the brown areas here? I'm just going to leave them. The handle, the axe, uh, all of the straps, and all the bandages and so on wrapped around look all nicely shaded. So we're just going to leave that. You can put a highlight there if you want to. I, it's one of the insignificant parts to the miniature, so I just like to leave that. As it is, that's that done. Um, so we really are making good progress uh, with this now. But those two boys being picked out is really good. There's actually one thing that I've just noticed it need to do. You take that highlight with the bone, maybe make it a little bit more, adding a bit more bone to it here, just don't make it too stark. And then you're picking out the fingernails. Uh, I've just noticed here. So you've got fingernails with the hand around the axe. They're sculpted on for you, so you can see them. One two, three I can see on the fingers and then this thumb now as well, pick that out and just repeat that uh, wherever you can see it, I can see it here on the uh, gun so I'll just pick that out as well, one, two, three and the thumb now and then I can't really see the hands here gripping the, uh, the levers here, just pick out what I can see that's about it. So just remember that fingernails, I usually forget those, but they just remember to pick them out just on the hands there, and that finishes that off nicely. Right, so next colour is the white. Just looking to pick out any uh, areas of the design that are going to be in solid white. Uh, this arrow, for example, uh, I'm just going to fill that out with white, nice and solid. On there, there was no point in painting it earlier, uh, with all the shading still to go on. So the arrow picked out there. Uh, these bits at the front here. I'm just going to work uh, the white round. In fact what you can do is just paint this solid like so and not be too fussed. You don't want strong uh, shading on this. It doesn't look right with the white. So be quite strong. Like so, you see I've missed a few bits, that's deliberate, I'm not being too fussy, you're going to put a bit of shading over the top. I'm not doing the edges here, it's just where the orcs have just slapped on paint on the fronts of these panels. Um, that's what you're trying to reflect here, so I'm going to get all these teeth, 
Let's just we'll add some emphasis to this design. Try and make the truck look intimidating. Even though you're creating the illusion that it's something of importance on the battlefield. But in fact, it's just a 35 point cheap vehicle. Still, that just picks those out. There's lower ones here as well. Um, yeah, I'll paint those as well. So again, just flicking the paint. You can imagine the orcs just slapping uh, the paint onto these panels. Here, yeah, we'll add some effects to this. You'll find that you'll probably want to do uh, two coats of white. You do want it quite solid. Uh, so where I've already been, like this arrow's drying out. I'll just run the white over that again. Um, these are white. I, I would have done these teeth here white as well. Um, but there's a lot of white going on here, so I'm going to leave them and just pick them out with the silver. They'll still look just as good. Um, and now I'm going to... Uh, this white's drying nice and quick, so I'm just going to put a bit more white over the top here. Just to enhance it. Yeah. They're quite happy with how they've come out. There's a lot of interest here on this front uh, design. Right, so that's the white done. Uh, I've picked out some of the designs here. I haven't picked them all out. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, and then the areas that I'm going to do checker, the first thing you do is put on uh, your layer here. I've done one at an angle, one here, um, and then I've done one, a thicker one on this side here. Uh, two coats, nice and solid with the white. Uh, again, two coats all the way around here, the details that you're picking out. And then on the front here, I've done, uh, it looks like I just need to do a second coat on this panel. Just here. Strengthening the uh, white there, that's that done. And it's quite stark at the moment. The white, we're going to work on that, it's going to be chipped and washed and, and again pushed back because it's very, very strong at the moment. So we're going to the next stage of the checkered pattern here. So we're going to the next um, stage to get that done. So uh, we'll paint this checkered pattern here. And what you do is you take uh, your black, you alter it down. It's got a flow. You've got to get balance between it flowing and yet it being strong enough uh, to do this pattern here. I've got a brand new detail brush with a lovely uh, tip to it. And I just run a line. Let's do uh, a triple here. So that means I'm going to have uh, two, three rows here of these. Um, black and white squares. So have a nice flow on the brush. I'm going to run the brush down here. You do want to be neat. So there's one uh, and that's about a third of the way along and then the next third I'm going to run it along. A nice flow to that paint. So you can see there I've got my lines in, they're nice equally balanced. If you make a real mess of it, just paint the whole thing in white again, start up, start again uh, with it, that's no problem. And once those lines are set up, uh, you want to make them square, so you want the same width that you have there for here. So I reckon I'm going to need to put a line in just about here. Down. Down, down, down there. Just going to straighten up here with the line, just on a wander. Here. And as you start to get towards the end, just think to yourself how many are going to get in here. I could squeeze in another one or try and just stretch it. So I'm going to try and stretch the line across here a little bit. And then. Yeah, no, I'm gonna actually going to come back on myself and try and narrow up. So 
I tuck one in there and then it doesn't matter too much if the M1's just not quite long enough, it doesn't matter. That looks alright. That looks fine. Once those squares are filled in they'll look fine. So that's your grid laid out and that makes the whole process a lot easier. Um, you've used the black at the edging which will help you and you just simply take the black then. Thicker version this time but still I'm going to add a, bit of, a little bit of water to it to make it flow nicely. It's just a case of filling in the gaps. You see this gap one here with a mark on it. I'll use that one to start just to cover over that mistake. So there's a fair amount of uh, paint on the brush there. So a nice solid black. And you just fill in uh, every other square. And because you've got that black edging and grid already done, you're just filling it up to the edge. Makes it a whole lot easier. Like so. And then it goes from not looking particularly good to actually looking pretty cool when you start filling in these squares, it really starts coming together. See that checkered pattern starting to emerge? It's looking good. And because you're painting this pattern onto a black background, you know, you can run your brush over the edge, you can run these lines over the edge, and it's it, it doesn't matter, it'd be uh, more awkward. Not impossible, but more awkward if you were, say, painting onto a red background. It just helps to have the same colour as a background shade. Just filling these in, just keeping the paint loaded up to make sure these squares, these black squares are nice and solid. Getting towards the end, and you notice as soon as the last square is filled in, it makes it look a lot better. The eye really does notice. There you go. So there's a nice orc checkered pattern. That's not too much effort really. Uh, the grid helped me out. The, the key is to keep the paint flowing. Nice tip on the brush and just nice uh, flow to the, to the paint. But keep it strong enough so that the edges are not too watery otherwise it's not gonna it's gonna look weak when you're trying to fill in the edges. So it's just getting that balance right. Practice makes perfect as they say. Uh, but that looks nice. I'm happy with that one. For this one, I'll probably do a bigger set just to mix it up. So I'll just want run one line down the middle here and then bigger squares and then fill that in. But I'm going to do the rest of the checkered pattern. Uh, it, I'd encourage you to do it. It makes the orcs just look really, really good when you add the checkered patterns to it. Right, so that's the ch uh, checkered pattern finished. I've just done a bigger sort of one here. Uh, it's good for vehicles. For infantry, you're not going to be able to do such big scale ones, but for vehicles to, to move them up to, a, to make them bigger and look bigger, it's a good idea to put a, like a large checkered pattern in. Uh, so I've done one there. I uh, added an extra little one here just to um, mix it up a bit. Uh, and then uh, around here, just filled those in. They look like that. They come out nice. Uh, I like that side. That's come out good. So actually checkered pattern. It's nice to have it visible um, from all three sides. Uh, I think it really enhances the orcs, especially this black, red, white, silver sort of colour scheme. Uh, that's checkered patterning done. Uh, we'll tone this area down. Um, and then we'll do some uh, the chipping effect uh, with the metal. We're getting very close to actually getting this one finished. Right, so the white then, just to knock it down a, a few tones, um, I'll take uh, just the I've got an old standard brush here, something with a good tip and enough to hold some of the ink. And then wherever the rivets are, uh, I just fill that in with the seraphim sepia. See that? It's just so it looks like the orcs have. Uh, slap the white on and then it's you've got rust and grime coming through. It's all around those rivets. There. There. And you see how that's just just tones that white down. Takes away the starkness of the white there. And then I'm going to run a little bit onto the the main part of the white itself, just some, just to take away again some of the starkness of the white there. And then uh, a little bit on the checkered patterns. See that it just knocks just knocks that down a bit, a bit out of this arrow here, just takes the harshness off 
and weathers it, which is what you want. Uh, around the other side here, it's just random, really. Uh, you're going to put the chipping effects on top. See that? It just knocks that down. And then here, I'm just going to run the brush down just to show a bit of streakiness uh, to it as well. That can often look quite good. There. And then a bit here on this side. Like so. A little bit of that shading. Just like so, like good. And then a bit here. On there. And that's it. Quite happy with that. You can stab a little bit with the brush to make some smaller sort of flecks. Like some mud flecks have come up. That often looks quite good. It's just a different way of providing a bit of shading. Uh, but that's that done. Let's knock that one down. When we put the chipping on as well, that will blend it in with... Uh, it will knock that back and then it will also lift out this other metal work as well. The chipping really be, will be the key for this. But that's that done. All shading done. Checker pattern's looking good. Right, really, all that's left to do, the only colour left on this one, uh, is the iron breaker. And we're just going to use that to create the chipping effect uh, on the... Uh, panels and colours here, and then also uh, just on the main metalwork uh, of the vehicle as well. So it's the longest process. You can do as much or as little as you want. Uh, I'm going to do the front here, just to illustrate you how well it enhances it. Uh, so I've got a new detail brush here with a nice tip and a good length to the brush. And then I'll show you on the black panel here. Uh, so that you can see it more clearly than the other colours. I just take the brush and with the edge just pick out uh, the edging like so. Need the rivets, just run the brush and clip the top of them. That's the edge done. And then also paint like scrape lines across you can do them at different angles and directions and then also just stabbing in some chip marks on the main body workers as well so it looks something like that same for the white just chip up the edges like so down a few chips in there like that you see that it really enhances the, again, that they supply you with loads of detail on the miniature. So, and there's plenty to pick out here. Let's do the same on this next panel. Adding some chips on. And then uh, just picking out some rivets. Catch the edge. The, the key is not to do too much. You, you want the dominant theme or colour to be the actual colour of the panel, not the chipping itself. The chipping is just there to enhance um, the panel. Do a few on these teeth here. So the top, the very top point would be chipped the most, so i put a fair amount of chipping there, come round, chip on these uh, rivets here, and then the edging around them. Then I can add in a scrape mark. Here I'll do one in this direction. Two lines often looks good together. A little bit of chipping around it. Then just repeat that process. Yeah. Around and then you can see how that's really starting to enhance. Uh, the heat panelling there looks good. Right, so just working on the vehicle here. I've done the front. Uh, you can see how nicely it picks out the red chipping. Uh, the chipping just it, it looks good on all three of these colours. It's sort of one of the reasons why I chose I like the idea of doing this uh, black, red, white sort of colour scheme. The, the chipping comes up really nice. It's a nice, it's a deep enough um, silver so that it still looks good on the white, and then on the black it looks great, and then on the red also. Um, I've done the chipping on there, and it's looking good. So you got this chipping effect here on the front of these. Uh, but just making that look really good. Nice feature here to the front of the vehicle. So just basically going to do the chipping uh, across the rest. That's panelling. Um, as for the silver itself, 
and we'll do this the we'll do the side of this. So I would just pick out some. The rivet heads are obvious ones to pick out. And then see the edge here, I'm just gonna roll the brush along like so and pick out that. A little bit on there, you can be a bit more loose with the brush. I'm actually gonna drop the size down from standard over towards something like a base coat brush. I'm using an old one here, one that's worn out. And just use that to pick out edges. And then down here, I'm just gonna run it in a semi dry brush like so and that just picks out that much. you could spend hours just painting solid areas and it'll take you forever but just a flick of a dry brush is enough to catch the edges and then to leave the rest in shade and that's pretty much it for that nice and quick um, here this would come down these uh, things would come down sort of in this direction so I'd run the brush along here creating that kind of effect there that looks better. So that's the kind of thing. And then here on the, the base of the truck, where you've got all these different texture panels, I highly recommend just dry brushing over the top. And that will just catch the details on that without filling in the details. And then just dry brush over the top. You can even use an even larger brush than this. But, um, a dry brush kind of scrub. And you see that? It just enhances the it flicks and uh, catches the rivets and then it catches uh, the edges of the panels and so on without you having to spend ages and ages picking every individual part out. So just a dry brush scrub uh, for larger areas and uh, you'll get that kind of effect. It looks great. That's just what you want. You don't want cold, harsh, stark edges painted on. It looks too clean cut, especially for orcs. A nice scrappy kind of dry brush. But still neat enough. It's not going into any of the edges and filling them in. Uh, but it's just scrubbing onto the main panel areas and just picking out the details. So it's, it's like kind of suppressed kind of rust and the silver's coming through very nice. That's come up really good. Um, and it's nice and quick. So just do that for your, your silver panelling and then your nice neat chipping uh, for the other kind of panels that we see here. Yeah. So just repeat that across the whole of the vehicle. Uh, it'll take you a while, uh, but it'll be a lot quicker than what it would have been um, had you used another uh, technique. Right, so I've done the chipping now. Uh, the, the whole vehicle's been chipped and done. So you've got that scrubbing uh, highlighting to do and then you just pick out your individual panels uh, as well and that um, just enhances the whole model so it's looking good looking very good it's virtually finished it's a couple of little extra things you can do again it's optional uh, I've just got the black here and just keep a watery brush it's just the old standard brush here a bit of black and I just darken the exhaust vents so it's solid black at the top inside it's just where the old smoggy smoke would come out and then I water the, what virtually wash the whole brush off and then just fade it out there um, just to just to fade that down make it look nice and realistic it's just where the smokes come out and it's stained the top there it's quite realistic to do it um, you don't have to but I like to just make that as a finishing touch. And also, I think it would come out here as well. You'd have smoke belching out of this. So I've got watery black I'm putting on first. I'm just going to go down to about here. I can imagine the smoke pouring out. And then stronger black at the top. Like so. And then I'm just going to get more, put a bit more paint from the brush. Just finish off here with virtually, virtually solid black right at the top. 
That looks good. That's fine. So that's that. Finishing touch to it. And the wheels, I used to have them black, uh, and then I thought about it for a while. This thing's going to be driving through sand, so there's a, you know, and muck and dirt and so on. Um, and solid black it looks alright, but uh, what I do is I take the Steel Legion drab. Also, look, I've painted the rim here with the silver. That's just neaten those wheels off, they look really good. Uh, but we're just going to weather it here, just add some dust effects to that. And that's simply the Steel Legion drab. That's kind of outcome that you're going for. So these wheels are a bit more weathered and rough looking. And also look, any panels that are close to where the, the vehicle would run, uh, I've included it on there as well. So I'm going to take a nice large brush here, a wash brush, a new one, nice and big. Uh, it's dry, which is important. I'll take a bit of the Steel Legion Drab, put it on my palette, scrub it into the palette, just taking most of the paint away. You can scrub some spare out onto a tissue because uh, you want to do too much. Let's just maybe a bit too much on that. And then I just highlight or a dry brush onto the tyre there. You can see that I'll tilt it at different angles to see. It's going onto the silver here which is fine. You want it to dark darken and dirty the silver as well. Just run all the way around the tyre, up round underneath. That is the effect that we're after. So it's predominantly black, but just the edges, there's plenty of edges to catch on these wheels. They're very well sculpted. It's just a bit of scrubbing with this brush. And it just takes away the solidness of that black, picks out the edges, and just sort of dirties and dust is it, which is um, exactly the effect that you're after. You see the wheels here, I'm just picking them out. It's very quick, this, but very effective. I'm just going to catch the inside. One, two, and then three. That's that side done. I'm going to do the front here. My brush is drying out, so I'm going to load up with a load more. Still Legion Drab. Scrub it out on the tissue. And then just Flick over the top. Don't go over the top. Uh, don't put too much paint on the brush. I'll just start to. It'll go solid instead. All the way around on that wheel. And whilst I've got some on the brush, I'm just going to stab it in to these ball bars here. Again, you just want a nice hazy kind of highlight. around there. You can imagine that's where the dust would go. Like so, that looks fine. Uh, we'll just do these wheels here. Takes the uh, the starkness off that silver as well. That edge is toned down now because that's getting covered uh, in this brown as well. I'm just working the brush all the way around. So you see that now? Let's just pick out that de those details there as well. You can do a little bit here, around, maybe we'll do that. Just pick out a little bit of this, the bottom of these, a little bit here as well. That's, that's looking good. So that's that done. That is pretty much the painting done. I'm just going to do a couple of transfers here, uh, and then this vehicle is ready for varnishing. I'm just going to do a few transfers here. I'm going to put a bit of PVA glue on the palette here. Just a small amount there. And then uh, I've just picked out a couple of transfers. I'm only going to do a few. I've found that it's good not to go over the top. I'm just going to dunk them in water. I've cut them out. And then just put them on my palette there. And within 20 seconds they'll be ready to move. Uh, you just choose a nice brush. I use a brush to move them around. Um, this one here will do. And I'm going to put one just here. So I use a bit of water. And then I mix some PVA glue with it. And that PVA glue stop when it dries, it stops that ghosty white effect that you get coming from behind the transfer. It's a nice sealant to it, 
and it's actual glue so it will add some it'll help it stick and stay on the vehicle as well there's a transfer place it on you can use the brush to move it or very carefully use the tip very carefully use the tip of a uh, knife there until that's nice and square that looks good and I'll just let that sit you can use tissue uh, to dab it to dry it quicker I'll just do that quick here just push tissue on take it off that's just sitting there just nice got one other one I want to add uh, just down the bottom here uh, we'll just put that on now so a bit of water where I want it to go not too much and then I'm going to mix a bit of PVA glue in with that Get my transfer on the end of my brush and then just drop it in there and then I'm going to manoeuvre it using my knife tip it's just going right down there not really noticeable that's just going to sit there like so can't really reach that with the tissue so I'm going to use the brush I'll just try the brush out here on the tissue and then just rolling it across the transfer and just getting rid of the spare water so I'm, as I said I'm not going over the top with transfers uh, just two I've decided to stick on there it's just enough to add a bit more interest but without going over the top the bigger the model and more transfers you can add then a couple little things uh, you can do just to make those transfers become part of the vehicle so from sepia sepia and then uh, we'll take um, some iron breaker as well all I do is add a bit of the sepia over there and there just dirties it up makes it part of uh, the vehicle you see on there just a little bit and then with the chipping I found just to make it you should not be able to think I was just stuck a transfer on there I put a bit of chipping over the design and it blends it in uh, to the vehicle makes it part of the vehicle and that's it so you've now got these two trucks uh, the designs here different enough really has made quite a difference actually they do look quite different and then here different enough so there's a nice variety uh, with those two so even when you have the same model uh, just by painting it slightly different you can create a different impression with it but this vehicle is finished completely done once those uh, transfers are dry there uh, I'm going to give it a spray of the purity seal to finish it off uh, so with the purity seal it's just it's just light coats spin the vehicle around it's light coats so you want to go heavy if you go too heavy it becomes very matte uh, a light coat is good um, and it will protect the vehicle and it will look fine uh, just don't go over the top with it I'll do the underneath as well to seal the whole thing uh, and then that will be that vehicle finished right so that's the, the uh, orc truck done uh, I've just varnished it here it's dried nice and quick and uh, that's all completely finished very happy with how this has come out I really enjoy painting the orc vehicles uh, this technique as I said it's just it saves you loads of time and the effect uh, as you can see is, is quite impressive very happy with how this has come out look forward to using these in games uh, and I hope that's shown you that even a big project like this, a daunting project, um, you can get some great results and it doesn't have to take too long. So that's the in-depth painting tutorial. Uh, you can apply this technique to all of the orc vehicles and indeed you can use it in another faction if you want to. If this, just apply this technique over onto something else. But uh, that's the tutorial. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.